really exciting to be here. Uh, we were actually here at the conference last year, uh, and we had a great time. So it's honestly, it's an honor here to be, have the opportunity to present in front of all of you. Uh, so yeah, this is our talk. Uh, my name is Ashot. I'm Varun. And uh, we're going to be talking about Rust in React Native. Uh, so first, just uh, some quick intros. Uh, so my background, uh, so I worked at Facebook way back at a, in a different age, uh, 2011, 2016. Uh, occasional open source contributor. I have like four or five commits to React Native, you know, uh, some of my most uh, proud commits. Uh, <laughs> And uh, interests include you know, skiing, hip hop, uh, I love Burning Man, talk to me about Burning Man if you find me, uh, and a big cyclist. Um, the founder of Calm, uh, which you will learn more about very soon. Um, and fun fact about me, I do not know Rust at all. Uh, so don't ask me about Rust. <laughs> My name is Varun again. Uh, I previously worked at Amazon, specifically in AWS, for a few years. And I currently work at Calm. He's my boss. <laughs> and in my free time, I enjoy learning languages, going on long walks, both by the beach, but also by Bavel Castle, and uh, making music. And I do not know React Native. <laughs> so you guys kind of picking up why there's two of us on stage here now. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, get the claps for not knowing things, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, the naive view, oops, let's go back one. It's JavaScript. The naive view of React Native, right, what a lot of people on Stack Overflow seem to believe is that it lets you write an app using just JavaScript. But I think most of you in the audience know that this is rarely true, right? So you got, you know, you got your Java, you got your Objective-C, you got your Kotlin, you got your Swift, and now you got your C++, you know. In fact, to use React Native, you often find yourself writing code in a whole wide variety of other languages. In fact, in the Calm app, we use all of these languages, right? And, uh, and as if that wasn't enough. <laughs> we also use Rust now. <laughs> yeah. So show of hands, who here is familiar with Rust? OK, that's like maybe 25% of the audience, roughly. Um, well, Rust is a kind of low-level language, uh, more akin to C++ or C. Uh, but the advantages are it's memory safe, and uh, it's type safe. And it kind of operates at a higher level. Also, it has a package manager that's similar to NPM called Cargo. Cool. Um, so we know what you're all thinking, right? We really need yet another language. Uh, so to answer this question, uh, we're going to zoom in a little bit more into the app we're working on. And we're not here to tell you that every React Native app needs Rust, uh, but we do believe in our case it was sort of justified. Uh, OK, so some background about Calm. So Calm is an encrypted messaging app. Uh, so think kind of like Signal, right? Um, so I'll kind of premise quick pitch of Calm uh, to date. And 10 encryption really only works for simple messaging apps, I like, think like a WhatsApp or like an iMessage or like a Signal, right? Uh, so anything that's kind of more complicated, you know, uh, you can't really do with end-to-end encryption because in end-to-end encryption, all the data is just on your phone, and your phone can't really do everything that a server can, right? And so uh, our solution at Com is the key server, uh, which is a fancy word that we use for a personal private server. So that's Com for you. Um, now. Uh, by the way, DM, if you're interested in trying it out, DM me. <laughs> OK, so uh, let's talk a little bit about how Calm uses C++ today. Because Rust for us really is kind of operating at the C++, C++ level, and it's sort of meant kind of as an alternative there, right? So first thing, encryption. Um, so we use a library called Ohm. Uh, it's a library made in Europe. Uh, and it is a library made by matrix.org. Uh, and it's uh, specifically an implementation of the double ratchet end to end encryption algorithm, first uh, kind of made by Signal. Uh, and that's a C library, so we use that. We also use SQLite, uh, which I'm guessing many of you are familiar with. Um, it is a SQL database, uh, and it's written in C. Um, and uh, we also use gRPC. Uh, gRPC is uh, kind of a networking kind of layer uh, protocol that uh, was made by Google. Um, and unfortunately, the libraries for it don't really work for React Native. Uh, and so we uh, used, uh, at least before we had Rust, we used a, a C, C++ kind of layer for that uh, as well. 
OK, so let's jump into how we use uh, C++. You guys, a show of hands, who here is familiar with JSI? Right, so OK, some of you. Uh, probably has been brought up multiple times at, at this conference already. Uh, but just to give you all like a really quick idea of what JSI is, the real cool thing about JSI is that it lets you take the thread that's running the JavaScript in your code, and it lets you run native code, in particular C++, but C++ can call other languages, right? Um, and so you're able to actually call that C++ code inside the JS thread. And from there, you can do anything C++ wants to. You can start another thread. You can, you know. You know, just, just do pretty much anything, right? Uh, and so we at Com, uh, we have, uh, in fact, a C++ thread for encryption, a C++ thread for networking, and a C++ thread for the database so that we don't block the JavaScript thread and kind of uh, either hurt uh, the user experience or hurt the performance of the app. OK, so uh, now is where we kind of try to make an argument for Rust. So uh, C++, it's got its pros and cons. We're going to talk about the pros first. Right, so uh, first pro, okay, uh, you get a shared implementation across iOS and Android. And that's pretty huge, right? Like, you know, we could write everything once for iOS, write everything once for Android, but, you know, we're here at AppJS and we don't like doing that. So, you know, uh, big advantage C++, you can share it across those platforms, right? Another big advantage, uh, it's officially supported by Apple, Google, and Microsoft. Uh, sorry, not Microsoft, Meta. <laughs> uh, so meaning that you know, the, the pathways for using C++ in an iOS app, an Android app, and in a React Native app are kind of well understood and, and kind of well supported by the ecosystem. Not so for Rust, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, last thing here, um, so uh, C++ is a stable language. Uh, a lot more people probably to this day know C++ and know Rust. There's a lot more resources out there, um, so that's an advantage. Now, uh, let's talk about some of the cons. OK, so first of all, I talked about all the threads that we have, right? Um, so you guys here may have heard of the term callback hell uh, from the JavaScript world. We have this problem in C++. When we want to call you know, something and fetch something from the database, maybe then decrypt something, and then maybe pass that back to JavaScript, we have to pass a lot of callbacks, and there's a lot of indentation, and the code doesn't look super great. OK, uh, another one is integrating libraries is a pain in C++. Uh, unlike JavaScript and unlike Rust, there is no like official package manager. There's no official kind of supported way uh, for people to publish packages uh, in an open way and for people then to consume those packages. And finally, uh, lack of memory safety guarantees. And this is honestly, uh, and as somebody who doesn't know Rust, this is though the, the kind of the most exciting thing arguably about Rust. Rust is sort of the first language to bring this idea of memory safety to the public, and Varun's going to be talking about that later. All right, so I'm going to go into each one of these in a little bit more detail. Uh, so first, we're just going to talk about callback hell. Just really concretely, this is what it looks like in our code base. And we got a little GitHub URL there if you guys want to check it out. But generally, uh, you can see that each of these colors represent a, a different thread. Uh, and you can see the very first one, that's the JavaScript thread. So we're using JSI, which means this C++ code is called on the JavaScript thread, which is very cool, right? But then we immediately, you know, um, not immediately, usually we do something else, but pretty soon we start calling the crypto thread. So the crypto thread is our encryption thread. Again, we don't want to block the JavaScript thread doing encryption work, so maybe we do some cryptography on there. Uh, and then, you know, we want to send that over to the database. So we then will call the database thread. Um, and, well, the database thread does some stuff, and then it's done, and now we want to resolve the promise. Well, to resolve the promise, we got to do that on the JavaScript thread. And so we have to pass it back to JavaScript. And so you got a, got a lot of this kind of indentation throughout our code base. It's not super great. Um, and it's kind of one of the problems we want to kind of address with Rust. OK, now let's kind of talk about library integration, right? So um, let's talk about kind of how to do this. So uh, I don't know how many of you guys have tried to integrate like a C++ library on iOS and Android. It's completely different on the two platforms. And on both the platforms, it is a pain, right? So sort of Android first. Uh, the typical way I've seen this done in, uh, in kind of React Native and in Expo is uh, you download the library in your build.gradle. You're like literally downloading it, you're unpacking it, you're maybe putting it in a folder, uh, often doing some pre-compilation step. There's a lot of Gradle code, which I didn't even put Gradle on the slide earlier, but <laughs> it's another one you got to learn, unfortunately. I guess groovy is the, the term. Um, so then uh, CMake. Uh, show of hands, who's used CMake here? Oh, God, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, CMake, CMake's crazy. Uh, it is what people use. Um, it's 
probably the least crazy of the options, but it is super complicated. Uh, and so to get a C++ library working, you got to use CMake. Um, next, talking about iOS, right? So iOS, um, you got to have, first of all, download the library into pod file. It's probably a little better uh, than the build.gradle world because you do have like a ecosystem of pod packages, which is cool. Um, but it's still a completely different kind of uh, set of stuff. And uh, now you got to do some Ruby, which also wasn't on the slide earlier. So yeah. Uh, and then uh, you got to configure build in Xcode, which uh, you guys have, I don't know if you've ever upgraded React Native, uh, used the upgrade helper, had one of those diffs on the PBX project file, and just been like, what? Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, uh, not a lot of fun. So another huge issue. Just to give you guys an idea uh, of, of what it's like to integrate a C++ project, I'm going to show you the next, uh, next slide here is what it looked like when we ripped out the gRPC C++ library in our code base. This is the commit here. So this is just going through all the stuff that we got rid of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love red diffs. OK. <laughs> All right, uh, so next let's talk about memory safety. OK, so I know there's a lot of kind of JSI experts in the house. Uh, so I'm actually going to kick this out to, to the audience. Can anyone here point out the memory safety issue? Raise your hand. There is a uh, memory safety bug here, a bad access crash, a seg fault. Anybody? Anybody? Oh, there's nobody. OK, maybe there aren't a lot of JSI experts in the house. <laughs> OK, well, I'll just let you know. Um, OK, so here's what's going on. So uh, we have at the top, again, the JavaScript thread. Then we call something in the database thread. Things are looking good. And then at the end, uh, you know, we're not even calling really, as far as we're concerned, we're not calling the JavaScript thread yet. We're just sort of like, OK, we caught an exception. Uh, and we're just going to like, you know, put it somewhere. It's fine. Should be OK. Well, here's the thing. In JSI, whenever you instantiate something, you pass a JavaScript runtime, and it does something with the JavaScript runtime. And this is a very capricious situation because, well, it doesn't always crash, right? And that's the thing about memory safety bugs. You know, things look good. You ship your thing to production, and then you get all these reports from users. Things are crashing unexpectedly. You don't have anything on the JavaScript layer really informing you. It's, it's honestly not, not super great. So um, the problem here was this, in fact, has to be run on the JavaScript thread. We have to do that kind of async call again over to JavaScript. Um, OK. Um, and I guess at this point, uh, Varun, you want to take it away? Yeah, so let me grab the clicker from you. <laughs> yeah, switch uh, spots. yeah, so as Ashok mentioned at the start, um, we've decided to, at Calm, add uh, Rust in to kind of alleviate some of these issues. So here you can see we have our C++ code. We use this tool called CXX to then talk to Rust. And then we use the Tokyo runtime, which is an async runtime in Rust, to asynchronously call our code. So if you'll recall, these were the cons that Ashok mentioned. So I'm going to go one by one and talk about how Rust actually solves them. So the first one, callback hell. So you saw that nested C++ code with a bunch of uh, lambdas, and it, didn't, it wasn't the easiest code to understand. Rust, on the other hand, has async await. So if you've seen uh, JavaScript async await, this is very similar. It's not exactly the same, but um, it is very similar to the event loop. The next thing is integrating libraries. So you know you could use CMake, you, and then within that you could use like VC package and this tool and that tool. In Rust, there's just one way to do it. You just use Cargo, and Cargo handles your dependencies, and you also use it to actually compile your uh, binary or library. So very easy, just the, the way to do it, and you don't have to think about it. And the last one, memory safety. And this is maybe Rust's greatest advantage, is that although it's low level and gives you a lot of control, it's also memory and type safe. It uses this concept of a borrow checker. So basically, at compile time, it'll make sure that all your, anytime you've borrowed data, um, that it is still alive, uh, that lifetime has not been, uh, expired yet. And so that's kind of how it makes sure that it's memory safe. So how do we actually go about integrating Rust into our React Native project? We're going to get down into the weeds a little, so bear with me. So the first step is we need a way to manage promises in C++. So if you'll recall, um, we, uh, 
we were passing a JavaScript uh, promise to C++. This is very easy with the JSI. On the other hand, passing that promise to Rust is a little harder because of the limitations of CXX and Rust Borrow Checker. It doesn't want us to send a reference from C++ to Rust because it doesn't know, it can't be sure what the lifetime is of that, value, of that reference. So what we have to do is a little bit of indirection. We basically are going to manage the promise on the C++ side, create a map of IDs to promises, and then when that promise, uh, or when the Rust task is complete, we'll call a callback function, which will then pass in a pro that promise ID, and then on the C++ side, we can resolve the promise. So you can see that's kind of what's happening here in the resolve promise function. Uh, okay, here we go. And then the next step, writing the callback. So this is the callback function in C++ that's going to be called by Rust. So when the Rust task is finished, it'll call this. Um, and then the third step, actually implementing the Rust code. So you'll see we have this CXX bridge. This is basically how we, it's a decorator that tells uh, CXX, which is a tool for basically uh, talking between Rust and C++ using a foreign function interface. Um, and by, tell, by decorating it with this bridge, um, we're saying this is where we're defining the code that will be shared to basically communicate between the two languages. And so you'll see we have an extern Rust block, and in there we have our add function, which takes in the two integers that are two, uh, two numbers that we want to add and our promise ID. Um, and then we have our unsafe extern block, which is the C++ code. And you see we include our Rust callback header, and then we declare the function name that we're going to be calling later from Rust. And then finally, we have to actually call Rust from C++. So this is what our add function looks like uh, without any Rust code. And obviously, this is a very trivial example. So it, like, you could do this in C++ without any issues. Um, but we, we're doing it in Rust for the purposes of this demonstration. So this is the C++ only code. And here's our code calling Rust. So you'll see we first. Uh, we first add our promise to our Rust promise manager, Singleton. We get back a current, the ID of that promise. And then we call our Rust add function with our two numbers and that current ID. And then once that finishes running asynchronously on the Rust side, it'll call our callback, which will resolve or reject the promise, resolve it in this case. And then that will be sent back to JavaScript. So we have a short demo. All right, guys. Moment of truth. Oh, yeah, demo time. All right, who here loves numbers? Anyone love numbers? <laughs> Let's get some numbers from the crowd. Somebody? Someone shout some, some numbers out. What was that? Nine? Nine? Uh, yeah, nine. I love nine. Great number. Anyone got another number? 21. Okay, well, I, because of my uh, lack of arithmetic skills, I really need this calculator to help me out. <laughs> uh, woo! 30. We did it. Nice, <laughs> nice. All right. And uh, I guess that concludes our talk. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone.